Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi everyone. My name is Nasiha Naimad. I'm going to present my research paper on the topic of institute claims under part 10 of the Consumer Protection Act 1999 on the issue of halal. Okay, this is my outline of presentation where I'm going to look into the issue first and then the method I'm going to use while doing this research and then a result and discussion on part 10 and the last one is a conclusion. Okay, let's look at the issue first. Okay, the Consumer Protection Act 1999 is the act that is basically designed to promote and protect the interests of consumer. So a consumer always has weak bargaining power. Therefore, there is a need to protect them through adequate and effective law. So in cases of defective product which cause injury, the consumer may claim composition under Part 10 of the CPA. So the main issue is whether fast labeling of halal or non-halal product can be considered as a defective product and whether part 10 of the CPA is able to protect consumer relating to halal issue. Okay, and now we look into the methodology. So the method chosen for this research is the qualitative. So the collected research data were analyzed using the content analysis method in order to examine the provision under part 10 of the CPA. And then we look into the result and discussion. Okay, part 10 of the uh, provide for product liability. So product liability claims under part 10 are based on the strict liability rule. Okay, this the purpose of uh, this rule is actually to ease the burden on the consumer where the consumer does not have to prove uh, the guilt on the part of the manufacturer and this actually provides more protection to the consumer. Therefore, for consumer to succeed in product liability claim under part 10, the consumer must prove there is a defect in the product which has caused damage or loss to him and there is a causal link between the defect of the product and the damage. Okay, for result discussion, uh, I'm going to divide it into four sessions, which is defect in the product, damage or loss, causal link between the defect and the damage, and the last uh, session is the defenses and its problem. Okay, let's look at the defect in product first. Okay, under section uh, 67 clause 1, uh, it defines the terms of defect. So from the definition under the defect itself, it's clearly indicate that definition of defect is based on the concept of a safety. So therefore, in the case of a wrong labeling or false labeling, it will not make the product a defective if the product does not cause any physical injury. So in determining what a person is uh, generally entitled to expect in relation to a product is stated under section uh, 7 clause 2. Okay, under this section, it clarifies that uh, safety standard under part 10 are measured based on the application of the criteria that have been stated and this uh, depends on the circumstances of each individual case. It means that Aspects of advertising, packaging, and labeling will also be taken into account. So on the issue of halal, when a product is sold with any mark indicating that it is halal, then this is very uh, relevant factors in determining consumer expectation that the product is halal. Okay, however, this does not answer the question of whether Muslim consumers are entitled to expect that the product to be used is safe in the sense that uh, the product does not carry a risk of not only causing physical injury but also spiritual and emotional injury. So in Islam, uh, the term halal refers to the safe product that are good, clean, pure, safe, uh, of good quality and are not harmful. Therefore, when the product is not clean, harmful and does not uh, adhere to the Islamic dietary law, it can be considered as a defective product. Okay, and then we'll look into the damage or loss. Okay, under section uh, 66 clause 1, uh, it defines damage as a death or personal injury or any loss or damage to any property. So clearly, based on the definition given, it shows that uh, death and personal injury are the most important risks of defective product. Okay. However, this definition of damage provided under the CPA is not comprehensive. Unlike in Thailand, under Section 4 of the uh, Liability for Damages Arising from Unsafe Product Act, where it gives more comprehensive definition of damage. Okay. Under this section, uh, uh, it's stated that uh, damage includes uh, damage to life, body, health, hygiene, mind, and property. Okay, as we can see, the definition uh, from section 4 is seen as more comprehensive in protecting consumer. So on the issue of halal, if a Muslim consumer suffers from some kind of illness, such as uh, vomiting after consuming allegedly halal food, he or she may bring a claim under the product liability law. Okay, however, Consuming a fake or non-halal label products uh, rarely result in a physical injury but likely to result in emotional injury. 
So, whether uh, damage or injury can be extended to the non-physical loss is questionable due to the absence of a clear definition of personal injury in Malaysia. Okay, then we look into the uh, causal link between the defect and the damage. Okay, in order for consumer to succeed in claiming under part 10, so the consumer has to prove there is a causal link between the defect in the product and the damage or injury he or she suffered. Okay, however, it appears that proving a causal link places a burden on consumer. Okay, the cons uh, consumer leaks of knowledge and financial resources make it difficult for them to prove the cause of damage due to the defect in the product. Okay, this situation makes it difficult for consumer to prove the defect of the product such as uh, in the halal issue where the product uh, contains illegal or prohibited substance and the cause of damage is due to the defect of the product. Okay, to prove uh, that the product has been contaminated, expert opinion and little research need to be done and this actually requires high cost. Okay, it is clear that uh, proving the causal link between the defect and the occurrence of damage is not something easy to do. And this is something that burdens the consumer. So the objective of the existence of part 10 to reduce the burden of consumer in product liability claims is not achieved in the halal issue. Okay, and then we'll look into the defenses and its problem. Okay. Although the manufacturer of a defective product is uh, generally liable uh, when the consumer is able to prove all the elements uh, under part 10, however, he may escape liability by proving defense uh, by proving the defenses provided by, uh, under part 10 of the SPA. Okay, the relevant provision to be discussed uh, is uh, section 72 clause 1 clause C. Under this session, uh, the manufacturer may escape from liability if he can prove the defect did not exist in the product at the relevant time. This defect means that the manufacturer is only liable for defect that exists during the production process and is not liable when the defect exists at the time the product are in the change of distribution. Okay, this defect is unfair to the consumer as the loss of the image uh, that occurs should be borne by the manufacturer rather than the consumer. The manufacturer should be responsible for the process of supplying their product. So, on the issue of halal, a manufacturer may apply or uh, use this defense by showing that uh, the product has been contaminated with illegal or substance and cause uh, defects in their products while in the change of distribution. Okay. This defense indirectly provides an opportunity for manufacturer to escape liability. Manufacturers should be responsible for the product defect not because uh, they produce the product but because they have control over the quality and the safety of the product. So if no liability is imposed on the manufacturer in the change of distribution, it will cause consumer of the defective product not to get any appropriate compensation for the issue of halal. Okay, and then uh, we are going to conclude the uh, this research. Okay, the outcome of this research uh, revealed that uh, there is a weakness of part 10 in ensuring proper protection for consumer in Malaysia. Okay. Even though consumer to this are more knowledgeable, it is pertinent to emphasize that consumers are always in determinant position and thus uh, are exposed to exploitation. Okay. Further improvement of existing law is needed to provide a baseline for consumer protection in the issue of halal to ensure adequate protection for the consumer. We need to remember that uh, the basis of consumer law is to improve the quality of life, uh, promote healthy economic development and protect, uh, protect consumer. So to accomplish this, uh, the law must be clear, uh, specific and consistent. Okay, that's all for my presentation on this research. Thank you so much for listening.